Usually when we're talking about mating between individuals, mating is not happening by random chance. Usually people are going to select for the mate that they want to. Uh, and that mate is going to have tra traits that they find attractive. And so this non-random mating can change the frequencies of genotypes in a population. So maybe um, in a particular population, uh, we really like, like in the case of peacocks, the males with the, the great big feathers, and that's going to be selected for. Okay? Um, the males that have these little puny feathers, the females may not be likely to mate with. And so alleles um, controlling that feather growth are going to be higher, uh, the larger feather growth is going to be more prevalent in this population over time. So um, it's basically going to cause a subsequent selection for or against different genotypes that can affect overall allele frequencies. There are biological barriers that may prevent or reduce interbreeding between populations, and these would be called reproductive isolating mechanisms. So uh, imagining that you had a population on, say, one island, a population on another island, they weren't able to build a boat to get over to the other island, and that would be a biological barrier that would prevent them from being able to interbreed. Now, over time, as humans are able to travel all over the globe within just a few hours, um, our reproductive mating is not quite so isolated anymore. Uh, the United States is a great example of this. We have people from all different cultural heritages coming together and quite often interbreeding. <laughs> so um, we're having quite a lot of gene flow over time between different populations, much more than we used to. So some of the barriers um, that may isolate uh, different populations that may prevent mating from taking place. So the ones that per would prevent mating from taking place would be called prezygotic isolating mechanisms. And so this is going to be before a zygote could be potentially be produced. And so examples of these would be geographic distances, seasonal differences, behavioral differences, mechanical, physiological, and so on. In post-zygotic isolating mechanisms, this would create reproductive isolation even when these two populations manage to mate with one another, their offspring um, either are not going to be born, or they may not be very um, strong. Or they themselves may not be able to reproduce. So some examples of this in prezygotic barriers, again, this is so they cannot mate. Um, temporal isolation, uh, one of them might be active during the day, one of them might be active during the night. They will physically never find one another if they're not active at the same time. So night owls, morning bird, morning person, you know, they may not um, be able to find each other. Habitat isolation. Here's a snake that lives in the water. Here's a snake that lives on land. They're not going to be able to mate with one another because they live in different places and they will never see one another. Behavioral isolation. Um, looks like this one's doing some little dance. This one thinks, what the heck are you doing? Um, and so they may do odd behaviors that the other person or the other organism, excuse me, may not find attractive. Um, mechanical isolation. The parts don't fit together. So they may try to mate with one another, um, but they simply physically cannot. Uh, and then gametic isolation would be um, these gametes simply are not going to be compatible with one another. In this case, um, they're not going to be able to, to mate with one another. In the case of the post-zygotic barrier, so this is after a zygote is able to be produced, you may have things like reduced hybrid viability, um, reduced hybrid fertility. So these hybrids may be born um, but they're simply not going to ever be able to have babies of their own. In the reduced hybrid viability, um, they may be able to get pregnant, they may be able to, to form these, but they're going to die very, very early on. The hybrid breakdown um, would be if you try to mate two of these hybrids together, this F2 generation, uh, you're going to see just a much smaller, weaker type of, of offspring.